Hello again. So I thought today I would do a video um, with Auto Hotkey, kind of showing how to do um, GUIs, easy way to do it. Uh, in case you don't know, GUI is a graphical user interface. It's uh, basically a fancy pop-up where you can click buttons, enter text, that kind of stuff for your program. Show you kind of how to tweak that a little bit and a much easier way than manually having to do the code because that could be a huge pain, especially when it comes to height with all that kind of stuff. So a great program to use, it's called um, a Smart GUI and it's designed specifically for auto hotkeys. Um, if you want to download it, um, they have it actually on the auto hotkey website. I'll post this link down below um, just in case the link goes bad at some point you can just google smart GUI creator right there and you should be able to find it hopefully so this is the program here um, this is your window that you're going to be working in um, you can move it wherever you want now when you move it to where you want it and you start your uh, auto hockey script that's where this window is going to launch so if I put it over here run my script the window will pop up over here so I'm going to just put it in the middle here. Now the cool thing here, it, it kind of works like paint, where you're just kind of drawing what you want. You got all your options up here. You got you know your basic button, checkbox, radio button, text fields, actual text, and so on. You can add pictures. It's a really cool program. I mean, this makes it a breeze to create a GUI. So I'm going to do something really simple. I'm going to add a text box, put it here. You can right click on any of the items and say change label and put what you want there. So I'm just going to say this is a test, blah, blah, hello. And as soon as I push OK, that's going to display there. So you start out with a grid. If you kind of want to see what it's really going to look like, you can push options, show grid. And that's going to show you what the actual GUI is going to look like when you go live with it. I'm going to add a few buttons, why not? You can also duplicate a control if you want. And I don't even have to keep it the same size. I can change uh, move control. And let's make a really big one there. I'm just going to copy this one over here. Once again, change label. Just call this button one. Whoops. Make sure you push OK. <laughs> Button 2 and button 3. You can also change it uh, size wise to what you want. Um, but there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do here. Um, it's pretty amazing how simple it is. So let's say I'm satisfied with uh, this GUI. It's what I need for my project. I'm going to go ahead and grab that code. So when you do test script, it's going to show you what it's actually going to look like, but we already kind of see that. So we're just going to go ahead and say save as. And I'm just going to save it to my clipboard just to make it easy here. I can go ahead and go over here and control V. And there is my code. So as we see, we have my uh, text field there. This is test, blah, 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 hello. The three buttons I made and the show, which says show it. So I can name it. And what that's going to do uh, right there, it's going to change up here what's going to show. Instead of GUI workspace, it would say Tom. Test. So we got a pretty simple GUI going here. Um, I want to be able to assign it to a hotkey, so I'm going to put F1. Now something that's really good to do with these is to add a destroy at the beginning. Uh, the reason why is sometimes if you close out of this GUI and then try to open it again, you might throw an error, just saying uh, basically like kind of you're duplicating it. So it's really good to always add this destroy. If you're doing a script that's going to have more than one GUI, you can actually name them by just doing that. So a one. And then just make sure that you do copy that across the board there. That way, everything shows up on the GUI it's supposed to. But we'll just stick with the basic one for now. And you can use letters, numbers, whatever you want to name it. It's very helpful. 
Now we want the buttons to actually function. So when I click this, I want it to actually perform some type of task. So I'm going to put G for go. And we're just going to name it here now. And then outside, we're going to put that. And that's just going to display a message box that just says, hello, world. So pushing that, it's going to go here. So let's go ahead and compile that and see what we got. In the later in this video, I'm going to also kind of just randomly explain some really good uses for AutoHotKey. Um, we use it at my job all the time. Uh, we do a ton of repetitive tasks, so it's super helpful. You can do anything from like motivational programs, control outlook, Chrome, Internet Explorer, what have you. Alright, so I got my program running. I'm going to push F1 and I got an error. Why is that? All right, sorry about that, I'm back. Um, just had to take a quick uh, break there. Uh, so the reason I got that error is I actually misspelled the word destroy. I'm very bad at spelling, so yeah. So let's try that again. So we're gonna push F1, and voila, there's my GUI. So as you see, it opened in the same place that I drew it on the uh, program down here. See, it matches perfectly. And I am going to go ahead and push button one. And there we go. I got a little message box saying, hello world. So <clears throat> the cool thing about this is you can use it to create pretty much anything you want. You know, it, it can be kind of daunting sometimes to remember all the hotkeys you have assigned. You know, okay, F1 does this. Uh, Control A does this. Making a GUI kind of allows you to see what you're going to be pushing and what function is going to actually take place. Um, <clears throat> to make this interact with uh, Chrome, you know, check out my first two videos. They kind of explain how to get that all set up and whatnot. And uh, I'm actually going to make a video later that goes way more in depth on GUI creation, you know, how to do some really cool fancy stuff and uh, just any errors you might come across and how to problem solve them if you guys are interested. Um, so yeah, I just really quick want to touch base on, you know, what can you do with auto hockey? I mean, it's such an easy language to learn. It's a great starting point for anybody who just kind of wants to get into coding. Uh, it's very well known for gaming. The other day I helped a guy with uh, Diablo 2 create like auto buffs where basically it would loop around and every X amount of seconds it would automatically trigger one of his buffs when it expires. So it's very popular in the gaming community. Uh, me personally, I use it a lot at work. I've created motivational tools that track what you're doing and what kind of work you're doing and compares it to other, gives you like a little award kind of things. Um, you can use it for automating pretty much anything. Chrome, Inner Explorer. Um, I've used it for Outlook to auto-generate templates and gather data to fill in the blanks in those templates. Uh, man, the list goes on and on. I could go forever um, with all the stuff you could do. If there's anything you guys would like to see me cover on kind of, hey, can AutoHotKey do this? Definitely comment below. Let me know. Uh, I plan to upload multiple videos a week with uh, hopefully trying to focus more on the auto hotkey to Chrome just because that's kind of a big thing that people are looking for. You know, Inner Explorer has pretty much gone dead. Uh, only like 10% of the population uses it, probably less than that. And Microsoft has announced that they're discontinuing uh, support for it. So kind of a big deal to hopefully... Let this language live into the future with Chrome. You know, I, that's something I'm very adamant about. So yeah, let me know, and thank you guys. See you later.